In this video, we're going to look at the SIPOC, and SIPOC is an acronym for Suppliers, Inputs, Process, Outputs, and Customers. And the first thing we do when we're constructing a SIPOC is we start with the process, so that might be a little counterintuitive, but uh, this is our starting point for the SIPOC, is the process part of the, uh, of the template. And what I like to do is actually list out the, uh, the steps. So here I've got maybe six steps. This, by the way, is an example of purchasing a book online. And I've got it six steps. So these are the high-level uh, process steps for your process. Now, where does this come from? Well, it comes from your process map. And I always encourage teams to construct a high-level high process map for every project. Uh, usually no exceptions because there's so many different places we use the uh, high-level process map, this being one of them. So once we construct or list the uh, process steps themselves, the intent then is for each step, in this case step one, I want to identify both the inputs and the suppliers of those inputs, and then the outputs, and then the customer. And we do that for each step. Now some people like to, uh, after listing the steps, they like to move over to the outputs and the customers. Others like to focus in on the inputs and the suppliers and uh, I have a preference of working over on this side of the uh, template after I list the process, so we'll do that. So my first step is open the browser. So in order to open the browser, the input is uh, I need an internet browser, and who supplies that? Well, it's some software organization, maybe Microsoft or Google or uh, Apple, somebody like that. Then in the second step, I need to key in, or I'm going to key in a URL or a website address. And so the input is the URL, and who supplies that is usually the internet uh, surfer themselves. Step three, searching for a book title. So once I'm at the website, I open my browser. Once I'm at the website, then I search for a book title. And to do that, I need the book title, so that's the input. And uh, the supplier for that is the buyer or the potential buyer. Once I search for the book title then I, and I find it, I add it to the cart. And uh, in order to add it to the cart, I need the book title, and the supplier might be the internet site itself. Next, I arrange payment, and the input for arranging payment, of course, is a credit card number, and that is the buyer, and then lastly is the completed transaction, and the input is an agreement to buy, and that could be, uh, could be the buyer, but it could also be the, uh, the internet site itself, is the agreement itself. I put here buyer. Going back up to step one, so once I open the browser, um, the output is I've got a connection to the internet, and of course the customer is the internet surfer. I key in a URL, that takes me to a connection uh, to a specific site, so that's the output, and the customer for that is the, the, the surfer um, themselves. I search for a book title, and the output might be uh, the availability, whether the, the book is available and uh, the customer is the potential buyer. Now I say potential here because I haven't actually purchased the book, so I'm still a potential buyer. I add it to the cart, and uh, the output of that would be maybe a reserved copy of the book. Uh, on some sites you'll, you'll notice that there's X number of copies available, still available. Others, other sites where you're purchasing items will give you a, a time limit um, that you can complete the purchase before uh, your, your transaction is no longer valid, I guess. So reserving a copy of the book, let's assume that is the output, and that is also, again, the potential buyer. Then we want to arrange a payment for this book. So the output is, is a purchase book, and now I'm a buyer, so that's the customer. And then the last thing is a completed transaction, so perhaps the output is a purchase confirmation or a purchase order confirmation or a purchase order, something like that. And that's also the buyer as well. So this is typically how we construct a SIPOC. They can be tedious, but they're also, it's also very, uh, it's an excellent tool. And I've used it for a number, in a number of ways, one of which is the traditional looking at the process and the inputs and suppliers to that process and the outputs and the customers. Um, I have also used it just to identify customers. It, uh, there are times when the process is very complex and the customers are uh, all of the customers are not known and you can then use this if you like to go and solicit voice of customer but in order to do that you have to know who your customers are so you can use it for that purpose as well. You can also identify uh, non-value added activities if, if it's difficult articulating either a process step or the inputs or the outputs of the customers uh, it is possible that it's uh, not value added. Now that's a, a very general statement, but uh, but I have found it to be true in, in some cases. 
So identifying value-added or more specifically non-value-added process steps and activities. And then the last thing I've used SIPOC for is, is uh, determining the mix of a team, the team member mix on a team. So for example, on a team I want suppliers or sorry people that are subject matter experts of the process or who live in the process or deal with the process daily. I want suppliers of the process on the team and I also want customers of the process on the team. So that way anyway any changes we make to the process as a, as a process improvement we have the suppliers who agree to that change and we also have the customers who agree to that change if they are on the team. So I've used it for that purpose as well. So you can see that the SIPOC is a very universal tool. Uh, it's it's uh, very helpful for teams. It's very simple. Uh, again, it can be tedious, but I think the time is well spent uh, for the team. Last thing I would say is um, I always encourage teams to construct a high-level process map. And one of the one of the reasons there are many, but one of the reasons. I do that is because then I've already got the process and the high-level steps laid out so that when it comes to the SIPOC we can just put them in right here. So that is the uh, an overview of the SIPOC. Um, I hope you like it and thanks for watching the video.